Hello, everyone, and welcome back into the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. Before we get into our second segment of the day here on the show, I do want to remind you that if you want to contribute and interact with the show more directly, make use of the Super Chat, Super Thanks, and Super Stickers features here on YouTube. Great way to interact with the show. Get your opinions on air. Leave a tip or donation if you so choose. But most of all, just make the show that much better and i truly and deeply appreciate all of you out there leaving your support for the show and others around the network as well without further ado let's jump to our second segment of the day and like i said we're taking a little bit of a transition into the world of college football week 10 separating some contenders from some pretenders this weekend perhaps and saturday's slate could not look any more fascinating a lot of interesting games, potential trap games, if you will, for some teams. But four really stand out from a betting perspective. Because whether it be a road favorite going into a very hostile environment or a potential trap game in the ACC, I feel like a lot of these games hold weight now, especially since the first rankings are coming out pretty soon. I think after this week. So, look for a lot of shakeups. Without further ado, here's a little bit of a betting perspective on some of the weekend's biggest games. Starting off, perhaps the biggest game of the weekend Ohio State, four and a half point road favorites, going into Happy Valley to take on the Nanny Lions of Penn State. And let me tell you, I was up there last weekend, and even though it was an away game, the atmosphere in Penn State was electrifying. There's an aura, as the kids say, about this team. That makes you feel like they really are going to rise to the occasion this time. This is the game. One of the games that they've been wanting to win in the James Franklin era, but haven't necessarily gotten over the hump with. I believe they're 1-12 in in games against Ohio State or Michigan. This is their time. They're at home at what should be a rocking Beaver Stadium to really make their mark. In the CFP race. I don't know if this is going to be the win that elevates him to number one. I would still say Oregon will be number one because they still have that win as well. But it's a win against an Ohio State team that looks like it's reeling right now. But there's a reason why Ohio State is a four and a half point favorite. And it's probably because not just about the whole Drew Aller situation. And I do believe he will play in this game. But it's more about the completeness of this team. Even despite the fact that that if they lose this game, they should be out of the CFP race, all things considered. I still think when you look at it, they have enough depth, they have enough experience to go on the road and beat what is a passionate Penn State team. It really hasn't faced a defense or a team quite as physical as Ohio State. But there's going to be a way that Penn State can stay in this game. It's going to be if their defense can wreak havoc on this banged-up Ohio State offensive line because that's where all the problems abound for Ohio State. Their offense can move the football still because they still have Will Howard, who brings experience and somewhat level-headedness to this offense. They still have two of the best running backs in the country in Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson. But... That O-line, yes, they lost to Rattler early in the season, but they haven't really figured things out. I believe they lost a backup, Josh Simmons, to injury as well for the rest of the season. So that's where Penn State can win a battle. The offense, on the other hand, is going to have to rely on potentially a very limited Drew Aller. And it's going to all be about how they want to pick and choose their spots to exploit Ohio State's weaknesses in their defense, where they have few. And I feel like the way they're going to do it is use the physicality of Tyler Warren in different play styles. They're going to use the physicality of their running backs with Singleton and Allen. And Drew Isle is going to have to play the most efficient game of his college career. But if they do all those things, play efficient on offense, and dominate the line of scrimmage on defense, they have a chance. But I still think right now, Ohio State deserves to be the favorites on the road. So look for this to be an interesting game that could decide which of these teams has the upper hand in not just the Big Ten, but in the CFP race as well. 
But then the second game I want to get to is kind of a trap game moving over to the ACC where Clemson take on Louisville. They're 11.5 point favorites here and been playing some of the best football in the country ever since their season opening loss to Georgia. But the reason why I feel like Louisville can be a trap game for this team is because of the fact that Clemson feels like they haven't really been in second gear just yet. All of these wins have been good wins. And Cade Klubnik has looked like one of the most impressive QBs in the country, so kudos to him. But Louisville has proven that they're a team that might not get over the hump in certain games like they did against a missed opportunity against Miami. But there certainly seems like they're a team that can push a ACC contender like a Miami, like a Clemson, to the brink. They have physicality on defense. Tyler Schaff is playing efficient football. They have some weapons. And DeCorey Brooks, who is an Alabama transfer, they can score points in bunches. So look for this to be a closer game than people expect. I still think Clemson will win, but I don't think they'll cover the spread here. I think Louisville is too dangerous a team to ignore in this kind of ACC conversation of potentially playing spoiler. So this game is definitely going to be one that Clemson can't go through the motions through. And so that's why I'm kind of concerned and apprehensive about fully buying into this being another Clemson blowout. But that being said, if you know it's a closer game than usual, I wouldn't expect Clemson to fall out of the CFP conversation because they have so many impressive wins coming back from that season-opening loss, like I said, to Georgia. But this could be their toughest game on the schedule, and then if they win it, it should be smooth sailing to the ACC championship game. But it is a big if. But now, let's go to an SEC game that really isn't necessarily a CFP elimination game anymore, as this Ole Miss team isn't in my personal conversation concerning the CFP. They might be on my outside looking in list, but it still is an interesting SEC contest here. Ole Miss, six point favorites at Arkansas, which has proven to be a tough place to play. Don't underestimate the power of Arkansas. Talon Green, who to be one of the more underrated, more under-respected, I believe, QBs in the country. And this is a talented roster for Arkansas. This is a team that held its own and beat Tennessee. And not for nothing, I feel like Ole Miss is kind of in that Tennessee mold where they rely too much on certain things to go right for their football team. And so that's why I feel like this is another trap game. They have physicality on defense. I love Luke Haas and Andrew Armstrong with weapons on the offensive side for Green. And I feel like this Arkansas Razorbacks team, you know, could be primed for an upset here and potentially in two weeks against my Texas Longhorns. They're that dangerous and that good. So look for this not to be a CFP eliminator because I feel like Ole Miss is already Denton Berry kind of in this conversation. They have two losses, and they need some slip-ups along the way for other teams. But this still is going to be a challenging game for both teams, especially for Ole Miss, though, in this SEC picture. Now... Here's what I want to say about the SEC race. Because you would think that teams on the periphery, like, say, Ole Miss, LSU, Tennessee now, would find ways to beat teams like Arkansas and Vanderbilt's of the world. But now it's really proven that the SEC is deeper than we think. And especially for this game being on the road and Ole Miss not living up to the expectations, I think that this is the game where the SEC truly gets turned on its head. And I know that's kind of a weird thing to say because there are so many SEC games still to come that could truly make things bonkers in the CFP race. But this feels like a game where the balance shift in the SEC tilts on its head a little bit because Ole Miss was one of the most hyped teams in the SEC in the preseason. And now with two losses, potentially 
getting three losses against a team that not many people expected to play a huge role, whether it be as a spoiler, potentially a bowl game contender in Arkansas, that speaks a lot to how the season has gone for the SEC and how frustrating it can be for the trajectory of the rest of the season. But that's my two cents on the SEC. Let me know what you think in the comments. The final game is another big ACC encounter. This one truly is a CFP eliminator because one of these teams, you know, could have the opportunity to go 11-1 and and the other, you know, is going to have to be on the outside looking in. But Pitt, SMU. SMU, seven and a half point favorites at home against the Pittsburgh Panthers. This game is a classic offenses versus defense game. And what I mean by that is Pitt certainly has the efficiency and ball retention skills on the offensive side to frustrate SMU and really dictate the pace of this game. But SMU has one of the most challenging offenses the Pittsburgh defense has faced. And this Pittsburgh defense, yes, has looked very good. They're a young unit mixed in with a lot of experienced guys as well. But I feel like SMU has so much versatility now that they brought in Kevin Jennings at the QB position. Rashard Smith's proven to be one of the most versatile running backs in the nation. And this is going to really be a challenge a true litmus test for both of these units if they want to sustain their fight for a CFP spot and sustain their ACC hype. I feel like where this game is going to be won is whether or not, you know, SMU can have sustained drives rather than rely on the big play. And on the defensive side of the football, for the pit defense to continue to be opportunistic because Kevin Jennings, as a dual threat guy, has that explosive ability, but he can have a propensity to turn the ball over. So look for that to be a huge aspect of this game. It should be an exciting one, and it should be a game that truly can break the ACC race wide open. But let me know what you think in the comments, because that will just about do it for this segment. Coming up next, I make, or actually, we talk about some important injuries to monitor in terms of week nine of the fantasy football season, along with the ensuing fantasy implications that might come into play for you. We'll be right back after this short break to talk about them. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? 